Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Arnaldo and this is Articulture. Today I have for you my houseplant collection tour, part two, including the greenhouse and the outside of the art studio. So I have to show you how beautiful my queen's wreath vine is growing. It has bloomed and the blooms are spectacular. I hope you can see them all really there and appreciate them. They're these really beautiful large blooms. And there's so many coming in. Some down here, over here, all around at the top. And the vine is just growing, growing really well. And the plan and dream was for the vine to completely grow and fill the pergola completely. So I'm really happy to see that it is developing so well. And some more blooms over here. And then this one down here is a smaller plant, which hopefully will be filling in the lower region, which as you see is just vine and no leaves. I'm trying to get out of the sun. And if you look here, I have a couple of little babies. I have one little baby here and another one in the back. And those are actually little seeds that I planted from the flower. So when the flower starts getting like this, where it's already spent and it's kind of drying out, if you pull the little petals out, there's one little seed right in the center of each flower. So. What I'm doing is I'm collecting them and then I'm planting those. And yeah, she's looking really, really, really beautiful. So the queen's wreath is also known as sandpaper vine and that's because the leaves have a really rough texture and they're like sandpaper. So they're really rough, just like sandpaper. Yeah, so it's actually a really thick and sturdy vine. It's really, really, uh, it's not like a thin and delicate vine. It's really, really sturdy. So I'm going to see if maybe I can show you. See, like, in the flowers right here, right in the center, if you pull the little petals off, that's once the flowers are completely dried out, once they fall to the floor, once they fall to the ground, you just take them and you pull the little petals out, and then you're going to have a seed right in the center there. So if anybody has one of these vines, and didn't know that you can definitely propagate and start growing some little seedlings like that which is what i'm doing because i want to expand expand the vine to both sides of the pergola and let it fill in so in this outside area of the greenhouse this beautiful mangabe right here is called the falling waters mangabe and it's a really really large plant and it is growing as well doing really well here it's really happy it's just so beautiful I love that it has like these spots and yeah it's gonna keep growing really really big it's so gorgeous so I want to show you the two euphorbia lacteas that I have now this one I've only had for maybe a month a month and a half and all of this area is new growth like it is just sprouting out like crazy it's so beautiful so big i can't imagine how big it's gonna get but yeah really big really hardy grower and then right next to it we have the beautiful euphorbia white ghost that i recently bought and it is also growing it has some new growth there's all these little new stems there so pretty and then right here we have the Pachypodium sondarii. And it also is a beautiful, beautiful plant. And I want to show you the leaves. I'm hoping you can really see the leaves. The leaves are super, super, super shiny. And I mean, they don't even look real. I'm hoping the shine comes out there. They have this like shiny sheen that is like ultra, ultra. They look like they're plastic, it's incredible. So, so pretty, and it's not because it's wet, it's actually like that. And this plant gives these absolutely gorgeous yellow blooms. And I'm gonna try to find a picture so I can show you guys. So I've been waiting, and I'm hoping this summer, 
we're gonna have blooms from her. So here hanging on the side, we have a sunburst opuntia, which has this gorgeous variegation. Really, really pretty. And I'm gonna have to repot it. I just kind of put it there um, to fill in, but I know that she's uh, definitely gonna be growing too big to be in a little hanging uh, pot situation. But yeah, it just added that really beautiful pop of color there. Then over here, I have a little milii and that's a crown of thorns in this beautiful color just so pretty a beautiful red and then over here portalacaria it's a really pretty one with the red stems it's just so gorgeous and then up here i have a sensivaria cylindrica it's like a smaller version but it's growing a lot really pretty and then up here i have a nong nooch vine which actually grows these beautiful long dangling um yellow blooms that are really spectacular so it's just a baby for now but i'm hoping it will grow and fill the pergola on this side with some beautiful yellow blooms Then hanging on this side, I have another Millie Eye in a different color. And this has pretty like peachy colored flowers. So, so pretty. And then I have two Madagascar palms. The leaves are a little different. This one has these beautiful full green leaves. It's just gorgeous. And then there's this one. And these love the sun. That's why they're on this side because there's a lot of sun that comes into this area. And then I have this yellow blooming, uh, pretty succulent up here, which also is sun loving. Yeah, so pretty. So over here, I have the spectacular Epiphyllum Queen of the Night, night blooming queen. It blooms uh, during the nighttime, I guess for pollination reasons. And if you could see, there's this beautiful purple stems that are growing. I mean, the color is just incredible. And she just is growing, 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 growing. And um, the blooms do come out at night, but uh, you will be able to see them in the morning. So you keep an eye out for them. And if you can see, there are some blooms right here. There's some right here. And there's another one down here that's coming. So, yeah, in a couple days I should have those. Really, really spectacular. I didn't have any idea that it would grow to be this big. And it has acclimated to the sun, but I feel like the sun, it's getting hotter and hotter now as we're going into summer. So I think I may have to put a sunshade because it's just really, really, really hot. But a gorgeous plant. So in this area here, I have this beautiful variegated agave and I have done some research and I have not been able to get a name. So if I get a name, I'll let you guys know what she is. So beautiful. And I know it grows really, really large because I saw the specimen at the nursery and it was actually really huge. And I know eventually she'll be too large for the space, but I wanted to be able to enjoy the color that she's bringing to the space right now. And then this really cool, this really cool succulent is called a leopard plant. And look at the color of those leaves. It's just so beautiful. And then my new love is Semper Vivums. And i am just started bringing them into uh, the succulent greenhouse and I'm definitely going to be bringing more because I just love the way they grow. They're super easy. They're, they're probably the easiest succulents to grow. They don't need a lot of water. They don't need a lot of care. They don't need a lot of nutrients and they're super hardy and they thrive and they do really, really great. And I just love the rosettes. I didn't have as much luck with the echeverias because they are a lot more delicate and we have too much humidity here in South Florida and uh, they easily rot. So these are much more hardy and they do really, really well. So then I have a gorgeous desert rose over here. Right here. 
here in the back and it's doing really well and well and it has these really beautiful blooms yeah really really pretty this pretty plant is the Huernia penzigii and it has some blooms and the blooms tend to grow in the lower part of the plant um, not sure that um, this camera gets really close it gets kind of blurry so I'm gonna probably shoot with my with my iPhone as well to get closer pictures of the flowers to show you but yeah they're really really cool and then there's that one and then I have the beautiful desert rose over here and it has this beautiful beautiful trunk it's just so gorgeous the shape of it I love it actually it looks like a woman's body to me so pretty and then this gorgeous little cacti over here and then this long cacti over here which kind of looks like a ripsalis uh, in my research it came out that it was a disco cactus so yeah disco cactus so pretty and then I have a propagation from my fish bone right over here and this really beautiful Hoya Kentiana variegated Kentiana just really really pretty and then I have some more succulents over here I have a couple of Echeverias there's this one and another one over here really really pretty so the uh, succulents do well for me in pots I can't really grow them if they're not in pots because I try growing them in the ground and we have constant rain in the summertime and way too much humidity so they do tend to rot in the ground here in South Florida so um, I learned through experience that I had to keep them all in pots in order to have them and I really really love succulents and that's really why I created the greenhouse it's so that I could have a covered area where I could keep my succulents in pots and manage the amount of water that they're going to get so that they can do well so this one here is a Huernia confusa and it has these really gorgeous kind of donut shaped flowers which uh, didn't last very long it lasted a couple days and I pretty sure I have pictures somewhere so I'm going to add a couple of pictures of those so you guys can see it as well and then I have two beautiful papyrus here in the greenhouse I have one in each corner and the papyrus likes water a lot so I have them in these pots which actually I purchased with where you know you have to drill the drainage holes but what I did was I didn't so they managed to hold a lot of moisture so they're doing great and they're thriving and they're growing and there's such a beautiful structural plant I love the papyrus so gorgeous and then over here I have some Hoyas I have a pretty little pubicalyx right here one of the hardiest ones and this right here is the Hoya Memoria and this is actually a stem cutting propagation that I did from the plant that I have and she has grown a lot and I was able to grow a whole other little plant and this pretty little tricolor over here Hoya also doing really really well so beautiful and then I have some more succulents this pretty little Semper Vivum so gorgeous and this beautiful I think this is an Echeveria not really sure but I love the just the dark color on her so pretty a little uh, I think it's called a thimble cactus really tiny really cute and then another little cactus over here so here I have the Stapelia Gigantia and it is growing a lot really fast and when it gets sun stress it really does like sun though it gets like the tips in red like that really really pretty and then on the bottom here I have this concrete planter that I created from a palm frond and it has pretty little succulents 
So here I have little cacti and succulent. I have a lithops and I have a really cute little ant plant. And lithops has grown and it looks like it's opening up there for the new plant to come out. Such a little cutie pie. So I wanted to show you, I made these two little tables. I made one for each side and I made the legs out of concrete with my uh, concrete cone mold. And the tops of the tables are made from these pavers which they sell in Home Depot. So I went ahead and made two of them so I could have them as risers for my plants. So what I have here are some agave pups that I propagated from my larger ones. This is the quadricolor and they're just so pretty, very prolific plants, really beautiful. So here on the shelves, I have another variegated Hoya Kentiana, another one, I have two of them, and then a beautiful Portalacaria over here with the pink stems and the beautiful white leaves, so pretty and a little Hindi rope that I propagated from the larger plant. On this side, I have a beautiful Echeveria. And I have, I think this one is a Semper Vivum. Beautiful rosette. And another Agave. And these are the plants that do really well here because of the amount of sun and the heat that we have. Then here on the lower level, I have some more Semper Vivums. A little grouping of them. So cute. And the Agave Rum Runner. She's growing. She's going to be really beautiful. And then I have a Kalanchoe in the back. And then here I have another Semper Vivum. And look at the way that grows. It's just so pretty. The rosettes grow all the way around. So pretty. I love it. And then another desert rose. And a gorgeous bromeliad. And then here I have the Sirius Stenogonus. Beautiful cactus. So on this side of the art studio, I'll go over the plants. It's already starting to rain here in Florida. It pretty much rains every day in the summer. This beautiful agave is the Victoria Regina. And it's so beautiful. Look at that. And then I have an Apuntia here. I'll try to finish the video because it's raining. Then I have a barrel cactus, really pretty. I have some Echeverias down here and another little cactus, another little Steno, Steno Sirius. And then up here, I have this gorgeous Mangabe Pineapple Express. And it's been growing a lot, it's so pretty. And it has these beautiful spots, so gorgeous. And then here I have the larger Stenocereus cactus. So pretty. Then on the wall hanging planters, I have this beautiful marbleized bromeliad. This beautiful, look at this. It cascades here and then here it grows up. So beautiful. It's uh, like a ripthalus. Then I have a cute little aloe up top. Then I have this other amazing succulent, super, super, super tall. Look how tall they are. So gorgeous. And a desert rose over here. Sorry about the airplanes. A jade. Fire stick euphorbia. 
that I propagated for my brother's house. It's doing great and growing like crazy. So pretty. I have another beautiful Millie eye down here in a beautiful pink color. Look at those flowers. So pretty. And then this huge portalacaria that is just growing more every day. So big and pretty. And then on this side, I have this beautiful yucca. It's called the Adam's Needle Yucca. And look at that, how pretty. It's such a pretty color to it. And then here I have the Kalankoe Bracteata. Such a cool plant. And the Aloe Vera. And then I have another huge Fire Stick Euphorbia that's growing over here. It's a little bit sunburned, so I'm gonna try to figure out what I can do to help her out. And then on the wall, I have some more little succulent, little echeverias. And then the cylindricas that are growing by the fence. And then I have a beautiful bamboo orchid. And I have tried in so many places to get more and I have not been able to find anybody. I have gone to two orchid shows and not one person had another bamboo orchid because I want to basically fill this whole section here with them. And I went to the person that I bought it from like three times and asked them to order them but haven't been able to get any more yet. But hopefully I'll be getting some soon. And this little guy right here is the Florida cotton plant. So it's just something I did for fun. A friend of mine gave me some seeds. But yeah, it's a pretty plant. Then hanging over here by the window, I have these Kalankoes that bloom in yellow. And the blooms, they just keep coming throughout the summer. So pretty. I have a couple of those and another little Portilacaria propagation. Because they really are easy to propagate and grow really, really fast. I have these three other beauties. This is the Philodendron Birkin. The beautiful leaves that it has. I have this other Sensevaria. I think this one's called the Black Gold. So pretty. And this Hoya Pubicalis. So this gorgeous plant that you see here is a coxcomb and it actually grew on its own because when the coxcomb flower dries it has thousands and thousands of seeds and they just sort of pop up at, uh, in different places there's a smaller one on the bottom here i don't know if you can see it and i'll show you there's a little baby coming out right here so just like that it grew on its own and it's going to have a huge beautiful purple flower so guys i really hope that you enjoyed today's portion of the tour please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in my next episode